Hello friends, my name is Bunny Ness and today I'm going to talk about books 10, 11, and 12 that I read for the year. Book number 10 was The Story of a New Name by Elena Ferrante, the second book in an adult literary fiction series. You've probably heard me gush about My Brilliant Friend, which is the first novel in this series. If you haven't heard me gush about it, I'll leave a handy little link for you guys so you can check out my review and hopefully be convinced to go and pick this up. Anyways, we're talking about the second book and we follow the progression of Elena and Leela's friendship as they grow up and they attempt to manage their future and their dreams and also the expectations of others on them and the expectations of society for their lives and also the limitations placed on them by their stations. I was already finished reading this book when I made the review for My Brilliant Friend and honestly this book had a lot to do with the way that I saw My Brilliant Friend. The threads that Ferrante puts in the first book she is so good about following up in this book. The plot has a sense of urgency and as the girls grow up their problems develop this deeper kind of sadness to them. It's difficult to talk about this without spoiling anything but I will say that I truly enjoyed the themes in this book, especially the one about becoming your parents and whether that is good or bad or avoidable or not. Honestly, this left me with a little bit of a book hangover in the sense that after I was done reading this, I didn't know what to read next and I didn't know what would satisfy me next. So that's a thing that I'm dealing with. Overall, I love this. I rated it five out of five stars and I both cannot wait to continue on in the series, but I'm also hesitant to go there and then have it end. Book number 11 was actually a graphic novel and that was Alex and Ada volume one by Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughn. I mentioned in my haul that I have no idea what really inspired me to pick this up but I'm glad that I had it on hand after I finished reading Ferrante because this was the next thing that I was like, you know what, something short and sweet might get me back into the whole reading thing. I sat down one night and I read this in one sitting and I honestly don't have a lot of feelings about this. I rated it three stars. It's a really interesting concept and it does a good job of laying out the beginning of this story. I'm definitely interested in reading on but there's just not a lot to say about this introduction. Also I will say about the art that it was drawn well and it was colored well but it was very static. There are artists who can convey a lot of emotion and movement within their art and their drawings and this unfortunately was just not very good at conveying any kind of action or movement within its pages. Every frame is just like people standing still and a lot of the frames are repeated so you see like almost the same drawing a lot of the time. Even when motion is implied it just seemed very flat to me. Book number 12 was The School for Good and Evil by Soman Shanani. This is a middle grade fantasy and the first book in a trilogy that I buddy read with a bunch of lovely people who I will link to below. In this book there is a village of sorts that has this legend that every four years a schoolmaster comes and picks one kid for the school of good and one kid for the school of evil. We start the story with blonde princessy type Sophie convinced that she is going to the school for good and convinced that her dark-haired friend who lives in the cemetery is going to the school for evil. They both do get snatched by the schoolmaster but they switch schools so Sophie goes to the school for evil and Agatha goes to the school for good and they think that it's all a big mistake. I really really enjoyed this book and it was surprisingly a book that lent itself very well to buddy reading experience because we all had plenty to say about what was happening. Especially because Soman created these characters that you want to root for even when they are are being obtuse or one of them is being like purposefully evil. He plays to so many fairy tale tropes and he's very funny and witty about it. So this is definitely recommended for people who like fairy tales and who like humor about fairy tales. If you like to poke fun at those kind of tropes, this would be perfect for you. On top of those tropes though, on top of the fairy tale things, he also explores what makes good people good and bad people bad and beauty standards and how we view other people and how we kind of play into the roles sometimes that we are given. So there's a lot going on here even though it isn't without a few hiccups. Soman's writing can get a little bit muddled when he's writing action sequences. There were a couple of times that I was reading about actions and I had to go back and reread just to make sure that I had it clear and it's strange because otherwise his writing is very evocative and I could picture just about everything about the school. It's something that would be adapted to the screen 
screen very, very well. I can see it so clearly in my head, but something about his writing specifically for action just got a little bit unclear. Also, Chainani went back and forth within his own story, fleshing out the world and then telling action, telling us what the plot was actually about. And that back and forth made it seem like it was paced inconsistently. I really loved both elements of the story. I loved learning about the world and I also loved learning about the action and everything that was happening in the school, but unfortunately it did slow and stop and it had that kind of back and forth feeling to it. But like I said, positives include humor, really great characters and settings, and the side characters were all fantastic, and you have the intrigue and the mystery of just what the heck is going on. The real win for me here were Agatha and Sophie. I loved Agatha because she was truly a kind and caring main character, but she also had this rough, crass edge to her as well. I wanted to love Sophie, and most of the time I hated her, but then Chinani would do something that would just kind of pull me into her corner and I would be like, maybe Sophie, maybe you're going to win me back and she usually didn't. I finished up that last book on February 9th and I have not finished anything since because like I said, I cannot commit to reading anything, but thankfully I have a couple more buddy reads that are making me read things in a good way. I'm about halfway through The Night Circus, which is the February pick of the month for my Goodreads group Read with Marines. Plus I'm also reading Six of Crows with a bunch of people and I'm about 25% through the story as well. Also, I'm reading New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. If you'll remember last October, I had this project called 31 Days of Twilight where I got together with a bunch of girls and on my website we recapped a chapter of Twilight every day in the month of October. Plus I made some videos and put them up on this channel as well. We decided to go on with the series and in March we're going to be doing a chapter a day recap again but now for New Moon. I've also got a ton of footage left over. I meant to make more videos for that project and never got around to it so fingers crossed that I can put together one or two more videos and release them during this month as well. That's it. I don't know when I'm actually going to finish another three books, but you know, I'll keep the faith. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. And that you go back and forth between doing things that you're like, ah, oh, yes, go do it. And then no, please just stop. A plus reviewing there.